Good day, mates. From the home of the crocodile hunter, Steve Irwin, I found my way to the Australia Zoo here in beautiful Queensland, the Sunshine Coast to be specific. And it is an absolutely beautiful winter day. It's a perfect day. It's a Friday to go and visit the zoo and I'm gonna bring you along. So let's go check this place out. I hear it is absolutely incredible and darn right pretty special. As you pull into the park here, the zoo I should say, they have a timeline here. In 1987, Harriet joined the zoo family and shared a wonderful friendship with Steve. And then you go on to, to 1993. 1993, Steve's croc demonstrations were being touted as the greatest wildlife event in history. Look at that. And then just over here you've got uh, 1996 crocodile hunter documentaries explode onto television screens around the world. And that's what I would have been watching back in, uh, in 1996. And then you come uh, over to the next spot here in the timeline. 1998 Queensland Reptile and Fauna Park officially becomes Australia Zoo. And there's Steve with his uh, shirt saying Queensland Reptile and Fauna Park right there. Now when you come along here, you can't miss this. I mean, you're driving down the highway here, Steve Irwin Way, it's named after, uh, named after Mr. Irwin. But you can't, uh, you really just can't miss this. Look at that sign, Australia Zoo, home of the crocodile hunter. So there's, uh, there's Mr. Irwin. Now you come up here to 2002, Steve and Terry established wildlife warriors and vow to protect all wildlife. So there, Steve and his, and his wife right there. And just up on the next, Steve dedicates the Australia Zoo Wildlife Hospital to his mother, Lynn Irwin. And that must be uh, Steve's mom right there. And then the next one's a beautiful family picture. Look at that beautiful picture. 2005, final season of Crocodile Hunter takes the Irwin family on an across the world adventure. So there's Bindi on the left, and I'm not sure of the uh, little boy's name. We'll find out, I'm sure. Maybe we'll even run into uh, the Irwins as we go into the park here. So let's go explore. Let's begin our own adventure by going into the Australia Zoo. I couldn't forgive myself if I didn't share the uh, the gift shop with you. You know, it's always nice to give you a, a walkthrough on the on the gift shop and show you what you might be able to pick up here. Look at this. You can get yourself a a shirt right there, just like uh, Mr. Irwin used to wear, and where there's no shortage of little animals that you can buy probably see a lot of these animals I would imagine as we go go into the uh, go into the zoo I'm sure we'll see uh, some of these wonderful little little critters here there's some crocs right there kangaroos and where are the koalas that's what I want to see I want to see the koalas so there's your uh, there's your koalas. And here is a, uh, here's a little thing that I haven't seen yet in the wild here. A, platy, a platypus right there. So, all right, I need to find my way to the, find my way to the ticket booth, which is, uh, which is somewhere around here. So we'll go and see if we can't find the, uh, find the ticket booth and get ourselves inside and see some real, real animals. As you can see, I made it into the zoo. And this is the first thing that you see when you walk into the zoo, a wonderful sculpture of the Irwin family holding a, holding a croc and their, uh, and their dog. Boy, it really is a beautiful day to be here. Look at this. I'll give you a nice, uh, nice moment to take a look at the, take a look at the statue there. What a wonderful guy, Mr. Uh, Mr. Irwin was definitely full of, uh, 
full of life. You always got to appreciate individuals that, such as himself. So you come in, they have some different exhibits here. Komodo, Komodo dragon is the first thing that you actually see as you, as you walk in. So they say it takes about four hours to walk through the park and there's a big show on at 1.30 and they have an area where you can actually take photos with the with the koalas but uh, there's some uh, interesting folks there see if I can't put this up over the up over the top here Hopefully I captured that. I'm going to uh, do my best to share some of this uh, wonderful place with you as I just do a, a walk and a talk. Here they've got a Merton's Water Monitor, a Mary River Turtle, and a Eastern Blue Tongue Skink somewhere in here. So I'm just going to walk and talk and I'll share uh, share some of the animals and exhibits with you as I'm, as I'm able to, such as the uh, Asian small clawed otter that you would find in this, this exhibit. So you never know when you're visiting a zoo if you're going to actually you know, see, be able to see the animals or not because of the, uh, because of the, well there you go, I didn't have to look very long, look at that. It's actually chirping as well. There's your your little otter right there. Let's see if we can't get a nice look. Look at that. And here comes the other one. So we got a we got a pair of them. Isn't that something? Oh, they're pretty cute. Wow. Look at that. And they chirp. It's almost they make a uh, they make a chirping sound. Goodness gracious absolutely adorable all right you probably can't hear the chirping sound unless i turn the microphone around perhaps now you can there you go i think he i think this little one wants some lunch i'll be done i wonder if they have fish and chips it's friday being friday i wonder if they keep them fish and chips on friday you'd think otters would like, like fish i don't know about chips from cute little otters to uh, the crocosseum, or uh, turtles, crocodiles, to even Tasmanian devils. Will you look at this? There's the sign. So I can, you know, here's the fork in the road. And uh, boy, I got to tell you, the the grounds here are just absolutely beautiful. What a nice, nice way to spend a day. Just meandering or as my dear old uh, dear old dad up in heaven would say Tommy you should saunter saunter your way through the zoo and that's what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna saunter I'm gonna saunter my way through the zoo and hopefully we'll see some uh, some nice uh, nice interesting things as we do that I'm looking forward to actually seeing the I'm looking forward to seeing the uh, oh the um, uh, koalas. That's what I'm looking forward to. Now look at these look at these uh, turtles that are just kind of chilling out right there. Look at that. They're looking at me, looking at them. Will you look who I found? This Adalbra tortoise. And these, uh, these tortoises can live to be 300 years old. Isn't that something? Look at that big old tortoise there. And uh, they almost became extinct because they were being eaten by, uh, by sailors. But uh, look at that. And then if I look off in the, in the distance there, you can see his friend. And I... His friend was just moving a little bit. 
wonder who would win a race between a, a big tortoise and a sloth. Let's just be grateful that these aren't uh, these aren't live. Oh, look at this. This is a uh, I don't even know if I can pronounce the word Dino Succus or something. Di Dino Succus. Dino Succus is uh, this uh, this alligator, and that is a uh, that's an ancient that's an ancient alligator. That's a dinosaur, if you will. And look at the uh, boy! Look at the the bite on that thing. Can you imagine? Oh my goodness gracious! Look at that. And then there's the there's the the dinner, right there. Oh boy! You know they never heard of a. Uh, I don't know that they knew anything about plant-based diets back then. Or else this alligator might have might have done that. But. Uh, Wow, what a uh, what a little place for kids to come and come and play. Look at that. There is your Tasmanian devil, just uh, lying in the lying in the sun. Look at that, just kind of sprawled out, just enjoying a nice uh, a nice winter day. His partner over there laying against laying against the rock. Your uh, Tasmanian devil. I can't say that I've ever seen a Tasmanian devil before. Look at that. The dingo ate your baby, <laughs> and there you have a there you have a dingo right there. And uh, you know, I just learned a moment ago that dingoes don't bark. Interestingly enough, that dingo there is just kind of chilling out. Everybody in the zoo today is just kind of zilling, z chilling out. Maybe they gave, maybe they gave everyone the uh, the day off. So these dingoes come in in different colors. They come in uh, the 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 white and the and the tan and what have you. Here's a here's another dingo. Just uh, right over here just kind of chilling out they've got really really good hearing and uh, I think it was because of the dingoes that the uh, Tasmanian devils ended up just in uh, just in Tasmania but uh, there's your uh, there is your dingo next stop would be the North Queensland cassowary I believe is the pronunciation and uh, hopefully we'll get to see one of these here in the in the exhibit, this is the uh, rainforest gardener, the majestic southern cassowary lives only in the rainforest, the far north Queensland and Papua New Guinea. So we will uh, see if we can't see a cassowary. Cass cassowary. Oh goodness gracious! You know some of the some of the pronunciations as you travel travel the world in these different different lands sure can be a uh, sure can be a challenge and I'm hoping that we will uh, well I didn't have to hope too long look at this so there we have our uh, look at that right over in the in the distance if you can actually see that it's just kind of walking along out behind the those bushes over there. Hopefully they'll uh, come back over here. But it's uh, there's one of them. I would imagine that there must be must be some other ones as well. And maybe well here we go. Here comes the cassowary. It's a I think it is. I think it's coming around. There you go. It's right right there. Look at that. Just kind of hoping to give you a nice shot, but doesn't want to hold still for me. Maybe we'll see another. Maybe we'll see a. Uh, maybe we'll see another one. If I share the gift shop with you, I definitely have to share this with you as well. This is the the dining area, and as you can see, it's not too busy. Number one, it's a Friday, and uh, school holidays are over. 
for the time being or for the moment I should say but uh, this is the this is the play area for the kids and I see a I see a frog and a I see a kookaburra just uh, just up ahead look at the uh, there's the kookaburra you gotta love you know who doesn't love a kookaburra look at that and they have the the sound coming out there that's something that's a laughing uh, laughing kookaburra and uh, there's your there's your frog Boy, what a wonderful place for the for the kids to play and uh, here it is winter time this is winter time down under folks you know it, it really is a uh, boy it's really nice look at that there's your another big uh, crocodile give you another view of the the big frog and what's this over here this might be a uh, is this a koala I think it is there's your there's your koala just kind of enjoying some uh, time here in the in the pool wonderful and then if I come around you'll see a uh, look at this ice cream you see the frogs coming down to, to get some ice cream here and there's another one just up on the roof look at that I actually know somebody that's just terrified of terrified of frogs like uh, there, there are your frogs oh goodness gracious will you look at the size of this animal this cro crocodile reptile whatever you want to call it it is an actual monster and if I you can you can see from the size just looking at the one to the left of it oh my goodness that is one big big animal wow now I don't know how well you can see that but uh, here's another view of this thing look at how big that is that is just an absolute incredible animal <laughs> oh I've never seen anything like that before in my life ladies and gentlemen welcome to the Mount Franklin Crocosium. That's got to be a Steve Irwin. Steve Irwin must have come up with that name. You know, the, the Crocosium. And as you can see, there's folks filtering into the stands here, and I'm going to do the same. And there's a show here starting just uh, just momentarily, and I'll share that with you. Let's go. Let's go check out the Crocosium. And this would be the Crocosium, where the show is about to show is about to begin what a wonderful what a wonderful wonderful place they put together and they have uh, they actually have rows so they have different rows uh, that are blocked off so they're alternating the alternating the rows as far as the as far as the seating goes all right it's time for the uh, the main attraction if you will bluey 200 kilogram uh, crocodile that's going to be coming out here into the water to be to be fed. I can I can see Bluey. He's swimming uh, swimming there in a the canal. There he is. Look at there's Bluey, folks. He's coming out to get himself a bite to eat. So he's tapping on the, uh, there he is, he's tapping on the side of the, the pool to get him to come out. Let's see if he'll come out. I think he's going to jump out of there. Oh, there you go. There's Bluey. Look at Bluey there. Wow. 
That's why they call this the. That's why they call this the Crocosium. Look at that. Now that was pretty time for Bluey, but he has the potential to come flying out of that water from the tip of his nose to the base of the tail in the blink of an eye. That is his strike range. So if you're an animal, dirty murky water with your head under the water taking a drink, you can have no chance at all of avoiding that. That's Bluey. Now he looks pretty keen for a second feed. Richie, what do you reckon? Head around and hit him at the canal? Yeah, okay, so they're gonna see if they can't go feed them from the feed them from the other side here. Let's see. Doing that sun buddy. We splash around the water though. There he goes. Trying to get him just over there. He's gonna. That's interesting. <laughs> Got a bit more ammo here for you, buddy. Come on. There he is. He's going in the water now. Get him back out of it this way. See if we get a strike out of him over here, too. When he's just got his head above the water, his eyes are up, that's too obvious. But that end, his, his nose there on the top, it's got what's called a nasal disc. I wonder what they're feeding him. So when he breaks the surface, his eyes are above the water, his nose above the water. Just behind his eyes are a little black sleep which are his ears. So he can hear, see, and smell. Now he's moved through this water, so he knee deep, and he can do it without making room for the surface. See that? If he doesn't pop up, he doesn't disturb the surface. Well, he's backed up a little now. He's getting shallow there. There so we if he's go. Really moved the water, you wouldn't know the crocodile was there. Boy, it would have been something to see Steve Irwin doing this so back in the day. Don't you got a membrane across his eyes too? It's kind of white, opaque color. From here I can see it. That's a little game called Cup Prosa. You can play it, but you only get to play it once. See when he pulls those back feet in, you just hit it. Kind of watching his head, but looking that way at the same time. Once those back feet are in, the feet is set up. Set himself up. He gets his power from his tail. Sure is taking his time. All right, here we go. There we go. There we go. There goes Bluey. All right, there you have your croc, folks. Look at that. Good old, uh, good old Bluey. He's just, just Alright, right, good day mates. You know I was hoping to find myself one of these little guys here. This is uh, Tello, I believe is the name. T-E-L-O. Here at the uh, Australia Zoo. Having cuddled a uh, koala. I was hoping I would do that before I left Australia. Here you see the uh, entrance to the crocodile hunter shit story. And as you walk in, there's just loads and loads of various pictures here of uh, the Irwins and the story of the story of uh, the Australia Zoo and what have you. But what really caught my attention was just uh, just opposite, just opposite of the. Uh, of this area here and that would be just over here if you look at this here is uh, I guess I guess that would be Bindi up there and uh, perhaps Bindi won uh, Dancing with the Stars here in, in Australia look at that uh, look at that wonderful wonderful picture there and here is the uh, season 21 winners Bindi Bindi Irwin and uh, Derek Derek Howe, I believe, is is the name. There's their there's their trophy, and here's her uh, here's her dress for those ladies out there that would like to like to see this. There's uh, 
There's Bindi's dress. Look at that. Every woman's got a little black dress. And that uh, and that's something. And as you come over here to the to the display, they've got different pictures here. Here's pictures of a uh, look at this picture of a I don't know how well you can actually see this, but a crocodile crocodile attack. There's pictures of, of a crocodile attack. And here is uh, Mr. Mr. Irwin's boot, Steve's boot. Crocodile teeth marks, moving scraper. So there's his, uh, there's his boot. And this is all that's left of an aluminum pool scoop after Casper, one of the most aggressive crocs, got a hold of it. It looks like a bullet has gone through it right there. And uh, they've got all types of wonderful exhibits here. A lot of crocodiles. There's a baby, baby freshwater crocodile. But if I bring the camera just over here, look at this. Maybe I'd be better off to come down. Maybe like this. That's the uh, long, that is a uh, freshwater croc right there. And then just over here, you've got a large, large alligator head. Look at that. And up here another. Now here's a saltwater. That's something. There's a view from the top. Right there. So then they have some, looks like that's a saltwater crocodile head right there, the skull. Just a wonderful display. What do you have down here? You've got the crocodile trapping tools right there. Here's a barracuda head. Look at this. Look at that barracuda head right there. Then they have some tortoise tortoise shells. No shortage of stuff to look at here for sure. Look at this, this fossil. Here's a fossil here. At a, look at this. There's a, uh, here's a fossil of all fossils. Look at that. Uh, isn't that something? That's an actual, actual fossil of a prehistoric alligator. Goodness gracious. Wonderful. Very, very nice. Just a wonderful, wonderful way to spend a day here in the land, uh, land down under. There's a big crocodile with all the kids playing on it. You can see. And that's something. Look at that. What a monster. All right, let's go see if we can't find some kangaroos and some koalas. And here would be the entrance to Rue Heaven. And uh, I've seen more than my share of kangaroos on this trip. And uh, we'll go inside and see some more. Kangaroos are not something that you necessarily get uh, too tired of too tired of looking at. So we are now in Rue Heaven. And there's roos everywhere. Roos, kangaroos and wallabies. They have etch, etched nas, roo food, uh, wetland birds, tigers, Bindi's Island, and, and Africa. Boy, if there was ever a place made for a walk and talk, it'd have to be the Australia Zoo. You are looking at what I thought was a porcupine, and it certainly looks like a porcupine, but it is a uh, short-beaked echidina ec 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 or something like that. Look at that. Uh, isn't that something else? They look like, uh, well, they look like porcupines, and look at this one. Look at this one waddling. Right there, he's coming. Uh, he's coming my way. My, maybe wondering if I've got something to uh, something to feed. F 
feed them, but uh, wow, look at that. All right, there's so much to see here. Boy, I did not need to go very far to find myself some uh, kangaroos, and I think this might actually be a wallaby right here. See if I can bring the camera right up on him. Look at that. Here's your, uh, here's your wallaby. That's something. Wonderful. And then just over here, taking care of a of a scratch is this kangaroo. Looks like an older, looks like an older kangaroo. Kind of curious to see what uh, what I'm doing. Looking at my camera to see if it's something that uh, that he can eat. So look at that. There's your there's your kangaroo. I'll come up. Come around. This looks like a quite an older, quite an older kangaroo for sure. I don't know if, if I could sneak in a selfie. Maybe, uh, maybe I could. Oh goodness gracious! And this guy is just kind of chilling in the uh, chilling in the afternoon sun, just relaxing. Look at that. Beautiful. Just beautiful. And maybe this is why they call this Rue Heaven. Look at this. That's something. I'll just walk you through the walk you through the crowd. This one's grabbing himself a bite to eat. Looking for some... Oh, they're looking for some food is what they're looking for. <laughs> they're coming around thinking that uh, thinking that it's it's dinner time here. Look at that. They're all uh, coming up wanting to get a get a bite to eat. Look at this. You looking at me? <laughs> oh, wow. Really something else. Really something else. Chilling out. Wonderful. Are you ready for some tigers? I would assume Southeast Asia would be the place to place to find them. So here we go into Southeast Asia. And there's a spot up here called, I think it's Bindi's Island, which is something that you really should see while you're here as well. So hopefully we'll be able to share that with you and maybe see some tigers along the way. I would assume that this is where you might see some elephants. And I couldn't quite understand the wonderful lady that was trying to tell me what... Uh, what was what was going on and why I wouldn't see elephants but regardless I thought for those of you out there that might really like elephants I could share at least the statues as you walk into the uh, what I'm assuming would be the elephant exhibit here and there's another uh, there's another elephant there all right let's go see some uh, go see some tigers and look at the look at the bamboo here isn't that something? 
Look at that bamboo. Beautiful. Such beautiful grounds here at the zoo. Very, very wonderful. There we go. I knew if I waited long enough I would I would catch one. Just kind of going about. You see, maybe they'll turn around and come back this way. Well, look what I found. A red-tailed panda. Oh, goodness. I've been trying to photograph this uh, panda now for quite quite some time and it's easier easier said than done to be quite honest with you they are uh, rather active and just moving moving all around climbing up through the the branches now they're gonna well I thought thought he was gonna sit there for me but anyway there is your uh, there's your red tail panda from the Himalayas again so now we're going into the into the tiger temple and uh, I think we'll I'm pretty sure we'll see a tiger in fact I see one right there at the window walking walking past all the all the people here so let's see if I can't come in there you go look at that tiger just kind of walking walking back and forth What a beautiful animal. <laughs> really a pretty animal. <laughs> Trying my best to hold the camera still. Here's an interesting bird that's just kind of walking around like a turkey. That's why you have a gimbal, folks, so you can uh, <laughs> chase the chase the turkeys at the zoo. But Bindi, they gave her her own island, and let's go and uh, let's go check out Bindi's island here at the Australia Zoo. And it looks like you enter through a uh, looks like a shipwreck it would seem but here is the it's like on a moat looks like it's surrounded by a by a moat there's the other the other side of the walkway going in and then here is the here's the boat or the ship rather the shipwreck here we go let's go on in to uh, Bindi's, Bindi's Island. Quite sure what we'll see here, but we'll see. These are your options. Bindi's Treehouse, Lemurs, Macaws, Aldebron Tortoises, and Boa Constrictors. So most of it seems to be off to the right. And that's the way that we will, uh, that's the way that we will go. See if we can't see ourselves some macaws and lemurs and maybe some other animals. This is the treehouse of all treehouses. This would be Bindi's, Bindi's treehouse. And you gotta wonder if they didn't actually build this 
for her when she was a, a young girl here growing up in such a, uh, a wonderful place. Look at this, look at this beautiful, beautiful tree house. Wow, very nice. There's probably a nice view from up there. I'm sure they're probably just sitting out looking. Here's a observation area here where you can look out. See what they've got out here. So here's the the view from the lower level of Bindi's tree house. Wonderful. Well, here are your lemurs, and it looks like it is uh, looks like it's feeding time for these these critters here. Look at this uh, this one just enjoying a a snack. Not quite sure what it is. It's probably fruit. But look at that. Isn't that something? Wow. Wondering which piece to have next. Oh. He's going to take that whole one in his mouth. Isn't that something? All right, and I think there's a another one just over, just over here as well. Looks like maybe they're feeding them pumpkin or or something. That's something. Wow. It's fabulous. I have found my way to probably what is one of the more popular spots in the zoo, and this would be the koala walkthrough. And I'm hoping that I will be able to see a koala. I was told that you can't pet them in this. Maybe in certain times of the year you can pet the pet the koalas, but Right now you can't pet the koalas, but they're here and I see one just up here in the in the tree. And if I come around maybe you will as well. But there there's one just up there in that tree. And they will come down for they'll come down for feeding before before too long. I don't know if you can see it or not, maybe I'll be able to zoom in for you but there's one just kind of sleeping I think koala spent a lot of time just sleeping up in the sleeping up in the trees well will you look at this here's a koala look at that that's what I was hoping to see a koala coming down and maybe coming down to have a little little bite to eat but look at that isn't that beautiful And it has its eyes closed. Wow. Have a good one, guys. Thanks. Look at that. That's wonderful. Really, really nice. You see, now I am not the only one that likes naps. Look at this. Uh, Look at this kangaroo here, just kind of chilling out, having having a nice nap. Oh, I woke him up. These are the uh, these are the red red kangaroos here. These are the bigger the bigger boys. Look at that. Poor guy. I woke him woke him from his nap. You know, he was just kind of chilling out and. Uh, and I woke him up. Polly want a cracker. Here we go into the, uh, I think this is called the, the rainforest 
aviary here with uh, free flying birds throughout and uh, let's take a look maybe we'll be able to spot a bird I sure hear sure hear a lot of them we've got a net going across the we got a net going across the top here oh here we go here's a here's a little bird look at this down at the down at the water Beautiful. Okay. Oh, we saw one bird. Oh, there's no shortage of birds walking around in here on the ground, and there's a big bird flapping its wings up in the up in the tree just over here. Here are some more of these birds here. Look at them. Wonderful. Oh, here comes one down the, the railing. Look at that. Okay. And I see some I see some lorikeets flying around in here as well. There's quite a few, quite a few birds coming around. Some of them flying right, right past my head. And here is a, uh, I don't know if this is the burducken, the burducken duck or not, but here's a, here's a bird right here. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Very nice. And then just over here, I think we've got a... Look at this one. Right here. That's another beautiful... Another beautiful bird. Here's one down on the... On the floor. Look at this. What a special place. And I think this is uh, just about the end of my tour of the Australia Zoo. I sure hope you liked it as much as I did. And uh, I hope that you uh, have a chance to visit this place one day. It really is every bit worth the, the admission. It is uh, really a special place. Mr. Irwin up there in uh, in heaven, you sure did. You sure did a beautiful, beautiful thing. And uh, you know, it reminds me of the saying that the day you find a job doing what you love, it's the last day you'll ever work for the rest of your life. And that's probably why Mr. Irwin turned this place into as special of a place as he did. So. All right, I'm gonna work my way, work my way out. It's feeding time for me right now. Well, you know, I found the I found the critter that I've been hoping to find, and that would be a wombat. Look at that. There is your your wombat right there, and he's digging, digging away. You know, he's digging, digging to China. Look at that. What a beautiful, beautiful animal. You know, the diary of a wombat. When I was over at Christie's place, I remember reading that that book. And there is your, uh, boy, there's your wombat. 
Isn't that something? Fantastic. Look at that. Wonderful. And there he goes. Down into his down into his little burrow. So I I got to see a I got to see a wombat. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, coming back out. There you go. Look at that. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit. We'll uh we'll see. So boy, that was uh that was fantastic. Looks like he's just been digging digging this hole here and uh I'm glad that I I'm glad that I decided to uh just stick around just a little bit longer. So I don't know if that I don't know if that wombat's trying to make a break for it. Maybe I should call somebody and tell them that uh we've got an escape going in and you know, exhibit number forty two, you know, something something like that. But uh there there comes the there comes the wombat. Look at that. Oh wow. That is just uh that's just wonderful. Really. I've never seen a uh never seen a wombat. Never saw a Tasmanian devil. You know, but there you there you have it. There is your there's your wombat. Right uh right there. Look at that. You see signs all over the place for uh for wombats, you know, you want to be careful not to uh <laughs> you want to be careful not to hit a not to hit a wombat. You see signs for kangaroos and and koalas and uh and wombats. So there you go. There's your there is your wombat digging trying to make a trying to make a break for it. Wow. Fantastic. All right. And just up from the wombat trying to make the the prison break. Look at this one. And I'll give you this looks like it's a little maybe a younger younger wombat but uh, boy they really are adorable these wombats they really <laughs> they really are adorable they're just beautiful wow really really something else all right good day mates hope you enjoyed this trip to the uh, Australia Zoo